Hey guys, this is Daniel. Behind the camera I got Dominic and today we're gonna start the process of tuning the car. Check what I got. I got an HP Tuners OBD2 sensor. It's called the MPVI2 and this will allow us to mess with the engine programming for our car and unlock hidden power. Power that's already there. This engine is in many different vehicles uh, with higher horsepower ratings um, but to get to this and before we can unlock it with this, we have to pop a new computer in. I got a brand new computer, just arrived today, and this computer is unlocked, and we're gonna swap it in and mess with the tuning. Now, before we do any of this stuff, we gotta go to the track and get some base numbers. Quarter mile, maybe zero to 60. Let's see what data we can collect so that once we tune it and once we swap it over, we know it actually did something. So let's hop in the car, let's get out to the track. All right, so the base figures for this car is 295 horsepower and 262 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, and this is on 87 octane gas. Now this car or this engine can handle ethanol and for the last 16,000 miles, I've been daily driving on E85, which I've heard figures, I don't know how true they are, but they can give you an extra 20 horsepower over stock just on a stock tune. I've seen some tune figures uh, of over 40 horsepower over stock on ethanol. So what I'm interested in is keep the stock tune on 87 just in case I'm traveling somewhere I'm getting my 35 plus miles per gallon but then on ethanol I'm getting the full unlocked or the full potential of what this engine has to offer. So today on the track we're running on E85 and let's see what we get uh, time-wise.
So I went to the track twice. Um, the first time I was running a very low 15s, high 14s, and the second time I was running a consistent 14 and a half roughly. I also, I was able to beat a 100 mile an hour mark with this car in stock mode. Now keep in mind we're running ethanol in this, uh, which I prefer, it just drives a little bit better. Yes, I do get range anxiety because there's only a handful of gas stations where I live, but I love the way the car feels on ethanol versus 87 octanes. So the goal of this, if I can get a tune on let's say 93 octanes to match the performance and the feel of ethanol, it's definitely worth my money because I can get 93 octanes anywhere. Uh, also, if I can get some more power than I do right now with ethanol, even better, I can switch at my convenience. Now, not all these Pentastars run on ethanol. You have to make sure you have a yellow gas cap to be able to switch between ethanol and 87 or 93, whatever your tune is going to be. So I will post the times of all my uh, uh, trips to the track and uh, let's get tuning. So what we need to do, we need to be able to communicate with our car somehow. This adapter will allow us to talk to the car. Now, this only works on PC, so what I had to do is grab myself one of the cheapest tablets on the market. There is a minimum system requirements. This does not meet the minimum system requirements, but it still works. It locks the data just fine. It can read everything. It should be able to write everything that we need to do. The software is not very heavy. You don't need anything super powerful, but that's all we got. And because we're a Mac-based household, this is the only PC around here. I had to go and pick one up. Link is gonna be in the description of what I've used just in case you find yourself in the same situation. So let's unpack this puppy. Here's the adapter. It's Bluetooth capable, or we can plug in the cable for faster communication, which is what we're going to do. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to plug this in to the OBD2 sensor. Let's go. The other end goes right in here. And let's fire it up. So let's switch over to the computer. Let me show you what we gotta do over there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the VCM editor. So once the editor loads, uh, we are going to pull all the information from the stock PCM or the power control module off of it so we can pack it up and send it over to HP tuners. So we're going to click on read vehicle. So we're going to gather information. And here we can select what we want to save. We can save, uh, in our case, the transmission uh, control module as well as the power control module. In our case, the transmission control module on these cars is already unlocked, it can be written to, but the power control module is not. So we need to be able to read the data that we're going to send to HP tuners and after they open up the computer, they can load it back on. Or, in my case, I send them another computer and they load the data on. say do not read and here we want to read the entire system so in order to get your vehicle into start mode without starting the car just hit the start button twice do not put the foot on uh, the brake pedal otherwise the car will start now while you're reading the system depending on how long it will take make sure your battery is in good shape uh, during a reading, it's not that big of a problem. It just will crash and it will tell you it didn't do a successful read. But if this happens during a writing process, you are risking messing up your PCM. Uh, if you need to, hook up a battery tender, something to keep it going. Also, do not use your air conditioning. Don't play with your windows. Don't mess with the car. Don't open doors, nothing. Until the read process is completely done. Now while this is downloading, make sure you save the original file somewhere. Uh, in my case, I'll have a transmission control module and a separate power control module file that I'm going to put somewhere in a backup drive just in case I ever need to go back to it. Also, when you start tuning, make a folder and say, okay, this is on this date and try to get as much information in as possible because 
if you've never tuned before, you want to be able to track and see what happened, what worked to your benefit and what didn't, and you can reverse those changes. So a log file is really, really important to a proper tuning. If you really, really want to properly tune it, you're going to go somewhere and put it on the dyno and they will tune it and they can see exactly what this car can do. In my case, I want to have a good ratio between daily drivability but also have enough power so I don't want the super sharp, crisp shifts. I'm actually fairly happy with the way it shifts but I can see certain points where the car just runs out of breath and we're going to see if we can address those and hopefully drop maybe another half a second. This car performs pretty well for a mid-size sedan. 14 and a half second at 100 miles an hour. Uh, 10 years ago, you wouldn't be able to do that unless you had a sports car. Now, the average uh, mid-size sedan can do it, uh, but I wanna get it down to 13.99 at whatever miles an hour. This is just a personal goal of me. Let's see if it's even possible, not sure, but we'll try. So now that I read the PCM, let me save the TCM as well, so I have it for safekeeping. All right, so we just downloaded all the software, all the tunes, uh, the original ones, and what we need to do now is pop out the computer uh, so it can be sent out to HP tuners. <laughs> Let's see what we got under the hood. So I got a Canon air filter uh, and a torque tube from RPM Motorsports. Um, the only thing with the torque tube that I noticed uh, was a little bit more sound. I didn't really feel any more pickup, but then, you know, it's, it's in the eye of the beholder, I guess, uh, to see if you can feel the difference or not. I can't, but I do love the sound that the car makes on the wide open throttle. So let's disconnect the battery and let's pop the computer out. So here's the computer. That's all there is, three bolts, one, two, three. And these are color coded to match the connectors in there. So you can't go wrong, even if you tried to reconnect this. So you have two options. You can send out your original computer to HP tuners and they will unlock your original. Or what I did and what most other people do is they buy another computer from, in my case, from eBay, but they're in salvage yards. There's already enough of these broken ones on the junkyard from crashes where the computers are still in great shape. All you have to do is just send a, uh, a PCM file out to HP Tuners with the, with the new computer and they will load the software and everything right on there. So all we have to do is now plug it in and start it up. So when you buy a new computer, the part number right here has to match. All right, check this out. They even sent me a shirt. Let me pop it on. All right, so, ooh, these are comfortable. Let's get that installed. So I packed up the original one and it's gonna go in storage just in case for safekeeping. All right, so far this is the easiest job. If you know how to screw in a light bulb, you know how to put in a new computer. So let's get back into the car, let's uh, turn it on, the ignition, we don't start the car, and we're gonna scan it for error codes and clear any error codes if they're even there. So let's see. All 
right, everything is installed, everything is running. So the first thing we're gonna do to check to make sure that we can write to the PCM is when going to remove the speed governor. On my car, speed governor is set to 118. We're gonna go in and change it. You can change it all the way up to 255 miles an hour in this software. We're gonna set it to 200. We all know this car is never gonna make it to there, but essentially by going so far up, we're removing the speed governor. So let's go ahead and change it, hit right. So here we go. We have a car that's now primed to be tuned. Now, tuning needs to be done very carefully in very increment steps and then logging the information to see how it works. Again, if you don't know how to do it, best thing is go to one of the uh, people that are out there that tune, uh, possibly on a dyno if you can afford. If not, there's people who tune over the internet. The way it works is uh, you pay for their services, you upload their file, and they have you drive around for a little bit. They'll give you instructions on what to do. You upload them the file, they'll send you a new one. It takes a little bit of time, but you know what? You don't have to pay for uh, the tech, you don't have to pay for the dyno, you don't have to pay for a whole other thing. So it's very, very affordable. Uh, also, don't get suckered into those just stock tunes where they just flash something on it. That's for everybody. A tune is where you individualize and personalize your individual vehicle. My vehicle may make more or less horsepower than yours and this is because every engine is built just slightly different uh, and that's why it needs to be tuned to get to the full power. So go ahead, go out there, don't be afraid, tune your car, individualize it. Uh, there's so much you can do to the car once you read some of this information that's available from fan speeds to shift points to how rich or lean it runs. Um, and even if you just want to remove the speed governor, I'm not sure if you want to spend that much money to just do the one thing, but it's definitely possible. So I'm going to go through a third party and they will tune the car for me. And let's see, our, my goal is to get the car down to 13.99 seconds on a quarter mile. Let's see if it's possible. Until next time, take care.